Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today we're going to take a look at the all new Unify Network application 8.4.59 that has just been released to official. This release includes some pretty big updates, including support for Passpoint, packet capture on our access points, Pro AV support, and more. So let's jump right into it. The first thing in this new update is Passpoint. We're not going to configure it in this video as you need a third party radius, but I will do it eventually because I have used a third party called Iron Wolf, which is supported. But I'm just going to read this little blurb out here. Passport built on 802.11u standard simplifies public Wi-Fi connectivity by enabling seamless, secure connections for guests across multiple venues without the need for guest portals or complex connection processes. Third-party Passpoint providers such as Google Orion, IronWolf, and Open Roaming seamlessly integrate with the Unify network. And these are the requirements for Passpoint. Unify network version 8.4.54 or higher. We need these AP versions and a configured radius profile. It also says, please note, a third-party radius server is currently required for clients to authenticate against. So we will take another look at this in its own dedicated video. Next, let's take a look at Packet Capture. This is currently only available for certain access points, including the U7 Pro, the U7 Pro Max, and everything you see listed on the screen. We can only currently do packet capture with access points, but capturing on gateways and switches will be released in the future. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on one of my access points and we'll say my upstairs AP. We could see spectrum analyzer and then packet capture. So I'm gonna click on that. From here, we have a couple different options that we could do. We could either do it on the wireless or we could do it on the uplink port and we could choose the radios that we want, 2.4, 5, or 6. If we click the uplink, it's just on that port. Let's do it on the wireless. Now we need to select which network we want it to capture on. So we could do the default guest IoT or whatever we have configured. Let's do it on the IoT and then we'll do the duration of 30 seconds and press capture. All right, now the 30 seconds is up, we could download the file. So I'll click download file. And this goes to a PCAP file, which we could open up in Wireshark, and I'll show you that here. And we can now see this capture in Wireshark, which is really, really handy for our troubleshooting of our APs and our uplinks. This next new update is for all the audio video people out there. I'm not an audio expert by any means, but I know this is gonna excite a lot of people. This goes hand in hand with the new product that was just announced, the Power Amp, which is Ubiquiti's first dive into the audio world. We now have the ability to optimize traffic for audio and video environments right on the switch port. Now for the Pro AV, you need to look at the supported models. Currently, I do have a supported model, which is the USW Pro Max 24 PoE. So if we click over on it and then we go to port manager, we could now click on one of these ports. So let's say port 14. On port 14, we now have this Pro AV. If we hover over the eye icon, it automatically matches latency sensitive audio and video traffic and prioritizes it over other traffic. So let's click on that and see some of the presets. So we have Dante, which is very big. We have QSYS, we have NDI, we have SDVOE, and you could tell that I'm not an audio expert. We have Sure, we have AES67, and then we have Crestron. So this is great if you do work in the audio space. If we don't want to have this on and we want to do custom QoS on the port, we could scroll down and then click on advanced and then manual. At the bottom, we could see our quality of service and we could check this box off and we could create new. From here, we could say protocol all or we could do TCP, UDP, AH, DC, CP, and so on. We could also do the match types, we could do the code, and we could do the remark traffic and the queue, which is great to finally see some quality service in our Ubiquiti networks. This next update may not seem like a big deal, but we could finally rename our default network in this new UI. If you've always wanted to rename it, now it's available. So we don't need to call it default, we could call it main or whatever we want. If you wanted to do this before, you would have to go to the old user interface and then you would have to update the name and then go back to the new. So this is a great improvement for those who are looking to change the name. Another new improvement is the ability to download our inspection logs. If we're going through site manager, we click on inspection and then we could click this download button. Here we could choose the date range and the filters. So firewall rules, traffic rules, or add blocks, this may make it easier to sift through. And another little update, if we go over and click on one of our switches, we could now rotate the screen. So I'm clicking on my USW Pro 24 PoE, I'm gonna go over to settings. If we scroll down below, 
we could now see the display rotation. It could be none, 90 degrees, 180, or 270. I'm gonna put it to 270 and I'll post a picture right here showing what it looks like. Now looking under our Wi-Fi settings, we could see this channelization and we could optimize now, or we could do channel optimization daily at 3 a.m. or whatever time you set it for. But this graph is new to the Wi-Fi section. We could see this amber, it means not available in your region, United States, I'm in Canada, they're pretty much the same. But we could see what channels my APs are currently running on. So it's on the 20 megahertz, one in six, on the five gigahertz, on 40 megahertz, we're running on channel 38. And then we have the six gigahertz band, which is running 47 and 79 at 160 megahertz. If we didn't want one of these channels included, all we need to do is click on the channel. So it's enabled right now. I'm gonna click on 50. And you could see that that's blacklisted, so we'll never end up going to that. This is nice to be able to do it right in the Wi-Fi page. And sticking with Wi-Fi, it looks like they changed the performance graphing a little bit, which I don't mind how this looks. We could see our date, we could see the utilization at that time. We could also see the TX retries, the clients, the average signal, the CPU, and the memory. So this is really nice information to be able to look at quickly. The last thing that we're gonna look at is DNS Shield. So we'll click on settings and go to security. Under our security, we could see DNS Shield, and now we could see Custom. So if we click on Custom, it says the DNS servers configured on WAN will no longer be used, and we'll press Enable. Now, if you're using something like Next DNS, we could specify this here under the server name, and then we could do the DNS stamp, which I think is gonna make a lot of people happy. And that's gonna be it for this video on the new Unify Network Update 8.4.56. This brought a ton of new improvements such as Pro AV, Custom DNS Shield, Packet Capture on APs, and a lot more. Let me know what you think about this update in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.